Hello, members of Holden and Dalla Trinity and Wanamingo Lutheran Churches. It's good to be together with you again as we continue our Bible study and we explore the beautiful and profound book of Isaiah. This morning, we're going to be hearing from Isaiah chapter 55. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know. Nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace, and the mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands, instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. So the verse I wanted to address is right in the beginning. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come by and eat. Most of you know that I spent about a dozen years of my life living in Colorado, and Anytime we would have family or friends come to visit us outside of Denver, the first thing they would always remark about, of course, is the beautiful mountains. But then they would also realize after they got off the plane and they started going through the terminal outside, how thin and how very dry the air is in Colorado. And so we'd always remind people, take a couple of days, let your body acclimate to being in this high elevation and make sure you drink plenty of water. It's really important at that high elevation that you stay hydrated. Otherwise, it can lead to, lead to real health problems. And so when we lived there and when we had family and friends visit, people would always remark on how thirsty they were all the time and how they always needed to constantly drink water. So I think that's a memory that I will never forget, that profound thirst that you have when you're there. But I think as people, we have a profound thirst to be loved to be known, to be cared for. And so that connects to another um, version of a thirst that we have and that is quenched through water. And that's the water that we receive in baptism. In baptism, God takes ordinary water and washes away our sins, calls us by name, gives us the Holy Spirit to be our lifelong companion and guide and says, you are mine. I know you, I love you, I forgive you, and I claim you as my precious child. And so to be known and to be loved that intimately and that profoundly really satisfies our spiritual thirst, our emotional, personal thirst to be known and to be loved. And so we hear this invitation of our Lord to come to the waters, to be satisfied, to quench our thirst, and to know that we are loved and precious in God's sight. Then at the end of this chapter, there is a passage that talks about nature rejoicing. Mountains and the hills bursting forth into song, trees of the field clapping their hands, 
And when spring comes, especially in Minnesota and other northern places, it feels like nature is rejoicing. As you look out around you, you see the buds bursting forth on the trees. You see daffodils and tulip lilacs starting to bloom. And we're reminded that all of creation praises God and rejoices with God. So I encourage you today to go outside and look at some of the places you see nature bursting forth in life and rejoicing around you. Maybe that's in the tulip in your garden, or maybe you see folks out planting in the fields and that reminds you how nature rejoices. If you want, you can take a picture and post it as a response to this video, or just keep the picture on your phone as a reminder of nature rejoicing. And just imagine the mountains, the fields, the hills, the trees clapping their hands and rejoicing in the new life all around them. Thank you for joining us for this Isaiah Bible study, and we'll see you next month in May.